Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We are live now on Lunch is Over, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Spark FM online. Uh, it's it's a great day. It's a little bit, the sun's coming out, I guess, right now. It, uh, it looked like it was about to rain, but I'm excited to be here. We have some interesting, um, I'll say not interesting, some lovely guests coming up in April. And we're kicking it off with our first one, who's an attorney, uh, Right now, we are all in COVID. We still haven't left COVID. It's been only a year. Uh, I'm saying we haven't left COVID like it was a thing. Like, <laughs> it was a thing. But, you know, um, this this lingering quarantine that everybody's been dealing with. But on the flip side, there's been people who've been struggling during quarantine as well. It's not just families. It's the small businesses for sure, though, too. Um, and the families who run small businesses, uh, people who are creating startups. <laughs> uh, just so many people got affected at one time last year. So we want to bring some attention to um, some folks who may need some help, like me. Uh, I have a small business. I don't have a business certificate yet. Uh, there is some stuff that people have been applying for. I've been hearing PPE loan. Now, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm saying it wrong already. Um, loans. P Boom. Look at, see, I was just ready. I just wanted you to chime in. I know what it is. <laughs> oh, I never even heard of that. Wow. Okay. So with that note, with that being said, DJ YCM always does it. Who do we have here? I know who you are. I got your background, but I always ask, who do we have here? <laughs> Thank you. So we basically need you right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> I look at um, before we get discuss more about what you do for work, and I know people probably have questions. I actually uh, put the the flyer in my DM and told people to ask me questions and stuff like that that we could ask on the show today. But this is lunch is over. Before we get serious, I want to keep it light. What do you like to eat for lunch? <laughs> or is there anything a go-to that you do um eat for lunch since you're you're taking care of all these people in small business or i hope these small businesses are taking care of you for lunch <laughs> i gave that some thought and i decided that i would share with you my favorite most perfect lunch which i don't know uh-oh and i'm an american girl okay and this is it's Born in Newton, raised around. Nice. Okay. And so, uh, uh, my favorite lunch in the whole world. I'm, I'm ready. Big Mac, extra value, chocolate shake. <laughs> <laughs> we do not judge on this show. I was just not prepared for that answer. I'm just going to let you know. Uh, I kid you not, I thought you going to say like Boston baked beans, or like a lobster roll, something like Massachusetts specific. Oh, well. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna hang out. We're gonna hang out. I don't eat shrimp though. I don't eat lobster, but we're gonna hang out. We can go. Oh wow. Okay. This is wow. May okay, now I'm gonna get a little deeper. What okay, we're gonna take it back. All right. So just in case anybody didn't hear you, what do you like to eat for lunch? Oh my goodness, I get to say this again. <laughs> so I am a local girl. And judge me not, my favorite lunch is a Big Mac extra value meal with a chocolate shake and a pie. Actually. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. When did you realize that was your favorite? What did you keep ordering it um, each week? Um, or was it something like you was like, okay, oh, this is cheap and uh, frugal. I'll say, I like to say frugal. Everybody want to tell me to switch my words to frugal. Um, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. This this became my favorite at about um, age seven. Oh wow! Okay, nice. <laughs> it's always been my favorite. Not fancy, not maybe what you'd expect. Right. You know, probably look at me and go, "Oh well, she's going to say, you know, kale salad or something." <laughs> See, that's judging. That's totally, that is judging. Right. Not judge. Exactly. No, no. no judging. <laughs> so that's my favorite. Now, about a lobster roll. Right. Okay. We all know that lobster rolls are about four and a half inches long. If you're lucky, that's a snack. <laughs> wow see i haven't even uh the the lobster texture taste or whatever like i just cannot get with it for some reason um lobster crab i can only eat shrimp um, okay so we're gonna stay different texture so when we go out to eat you know we're just gonna have like a little appetizer is that okay works for me all right <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and then just to run it back real quick, who do we have here in the building? So you can say it loud and clear that I'm going to ask you some good questions so we can get this popping off about some small businesses. I actually got a grant. Um, thank you to the Boston Public Health Commission to help provide PPE supplies to people in the community. Um, so I want to get some more grants and loans and stuff like that. Yeah. So I want to make sure the lawyer, I'm not going to jail for anything illegal. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to go to jail. Um, so I'm Freya Schaffner. I'm a lawyer here in Boston. And what I do is I take care of small businesses and the families who own them. How long have you been a lawyer? A really long time. Okay. <laughs> and I love that answer. I love that answer. Was it something specific that made you say, I want to focus on small business? Like why not like family law or, or are you? Or whatever. Uh, or do you do family law? Like, I, there... I take care of small businesses and the families who own them. So here's what happened. Okay. Um, I went into business for myself when I was 23 because there were no jobs. Mm -hmm. So I had to make something up. And along the way, I ended up in a business that my husband, my sister, my brother-in-law, and I made up. My brother-in-law was a dentist nice. and an inventor, and he invented some things. Tell him to call me. I got a chip tooth right now. There we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so what he did, he invented uh, special things for treating headaches and problems with the jaw joint. Okay. Right. Very technical. Anyway, he made them. He patented them. They weren't selling. Okay. And my husband was an advertising guy. Mm -hmm. So they decided that we should have a business, which was great. Right. We had a lot of fun. It was, it was terrific. And then one day we found out that there was somebody infringing on one of our patents. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oops. <laughs> and so, you know, my husband called the lawyer. Mm -hmm. We went to Boston. We looked out over the harbor. We drank cold tea out of fancy cups and we wrote a great big check. And then nothing happened. And, you know, my husband started calling and what's going on? Ham, ha, ham, ha. And eventually his calls weren't going through to the lawyer. The receptionist was taking his calls. And then we got another bill. We had, they, they, How much they, was the bill? You don't even want okay. to know. It, it had a comma. I'm just sharing that live. I'm paying attention. It had a comma. So <laughs> in the meantime, I, Nothing was happening, so I called up the guy who was running the company that had stolen our stuff, and I made a deal with him and turned him into one of our distributors. Oh, wow. And so my that's, husband was like, that's it. You're going to law right. school. Right. <laughs> Nobody, can you just speak a little bit briefly what a distributor is? Oh, a distributor. That's somebody who sells your products for you. Yeah. So what we were doing is we were, we were selling these things to dentists and doctors and chiropractors all those kind of people. And this guy, what he was doing was he thought, oh, well, I can copy their product mm -hmm. and sell it cheaper. Wow. But he hadn't copied it exactly right. Okay. So it wasn't working. Wow. So I made a deal that he could buy our products cheaper wholesale, and then he could sell them for us. If they had have turned that down, could you have put in what they call a cease and desist? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of very expensive stuff okay. that we were expecting the lawyer to do. Mm. Oh, you send a cease and desist letter, okay. and then you go to court, mm -hmm. and then you do something called an injunction. Right. And you know, meanwhile, and this is important about taking care of businesses, is when you're in small business, you have to be very careful mm -hmm. about how much time you spend looking back. Oh, wow. And how much money you spend we're looking gonna back. We're going to repeat that. And what you're going to do to go forward, okay. figure out where I am, where do I want to be, and how am I going to get there? And you have to be careful if where you are is that somebody has done you wrong in business right. and you focus on fixing that, okay. getting them back, mm. getting, getting a judgment against them, that litigating. amount of time you could time, moved on. Money. Right. And the other thing that it costs for a business person is emotion. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in business for yourself or you're a small business, it's all on the line. So what has been right now during COVID quarantine been the biggest challenge with business? Last week, I seen an art, well, I know the article that came out, I believe in the Bay State Banner about um, 
African-American women in Boston right now, they're not receiving as much support, like with uh, grants and some, not grants, uh, loans and stuff grants like that. And loans, yeah. um, so I'm going to flip it. I'm a woman. Um, my, my, my business is woman minority owned. So how does that just like, you know, black, white, whoever, how can women right now, well, I asked two questions. I started off. I'm like, what was the biggest challenge? I'll say like right now with small businesses, but then on the flip side with women, what do it is no wrong or right answer. Like, what do you think is happening? Like, is it like, oh, we don't want to give the woman no money because whatever, they're just trying to do something out here. <laughs> like the guys or something like that. Like, you know, it, it, or is it that we're not completing the paperwork as much as we could be? Like, you know, there's nobody assisting. Um, and I'm just throwing a bunch of different stuff out there. I just, Got a whole yeah. bunch of stuff coming on. Okay, right, let's start with what's the biggest challenge for businesses in the middle or from the beginning of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we were given an amazing opportunity because all of a sudden everything came full stop. Right. Okay. Now what are you going to do? What have you been doing and what can you do? I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, the day before everything got shut down, one of the people I work with called me up in a panic. Mm -hmm. Happens to be male. That's okay. <laughs> and his business is personal training. He helps people exercise and, and eat right and stay healthy. Oh, the gym people, they were mad. And oh, my oh his, <laughs> boss, his boss was going crazy. This isn't going to work. Meanwhile, the person I was talking to was, was just saying, I have a mortgage. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So we talked and talked and talked and talked. We were on the phone about an hour and a half. And we got done. He called his boss and he said, tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., I'm going live on video with all my clients. And so he then, he texted all his clients, set himself up in the hallway of his house mm -hmm. on Google Hangouts and went, went video. Wow. He pivoted that Got fast. It. And for him, meanwhile, his boss was trying to get the loans, right. trying to pay the rent. He expanded his client base by just doing virtual stuff, by meeting the needs of his community in a way, you know, in a, in a different way. Right. So the first challenge through this pandemic mm -hmm. has been to figure out quickly, right. can you adapt? what you can do. <laughs> Same thing. A lot of law firms just kind of stopped for a while. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we didn't. My client, I couldn't do that to my clients. Right. I was, do, I was online doing Zoominars about how to get a PPP loan, what to do, how to help your people get their unemployment, mm -hmm. how to re restructure your business plan. Right. I worked with a lot of clients, but you know, the interesting thing is that between June and December, we started more new businesses wow. than in any single year before. Lot of creativity, a lot people of in. people saying, wait a minute. Right. Just like I said earlier, I'm going to have to make my own job here. Right. So what I That's saw starting in about <laughs> June was a real groundswell of energy. Now, let's take a look at what it is for women, minority owned businesses. Uh, if I, I haven't really run the numbers, but about 85% of my clients are minority women owned businesses. Uh Oh, so we know who we should be signing up with then. <laughs> and they, wink, wink. they go all, the, <laughs> they go all the way from a woman owned disaster recovery company that is making a lot of money wow. to a couple of women who decided that they could convert their minivans into school buses. Oh, because the school district needed more but buses. That's true. Wow. How smart is that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. All the way, you know, so teeny, teeny, teeny to a lot of money. Right. What the way I look at it is this the big guys in business mm -hmm. have a, they have more biases than you can count. 
And when they take a look at any one of us mm -hmm. who looks different, right. the biases click in. Yep. Okay, fine. Well, now I know who they are. I know what that is. So you have a target. And I can help my clients to work through, around, or in spite of. Right. So looking at the, the PPP loans, the idle loans, those are tricky mm -hmm. because they are overseen by monster right. paperwork-driven organizations. So I had to submit so many tax forms oh, in my life that I didn't even know that I had the forms to submit. <laughs> for well, I, I, for like, my own, for my own C, company. Here's a profit. Here's a, um, right. a I for something. I was like, I didn't even know that existed. Okay. Right. Now let me go look it up and see what it means. Exactly. Um, and when it, I had to do a change of address, to, it's been crazy. <laughs> we got to talk. Look it up. I will make your life much okay. easier. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, look, I'm over here pleading for help, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's the thing is you is knowing knowing how to do it. Mm -hmm. What it came down to is and what it still comes down to is when you're in business for yourself, one of your key resources is a banker. Mm -hmm. And if you're a teeny tiny business and you're trying to get traction with Bank of America, forget it. Go to a small bank. All right. Get to know the branch manager. So my clients who worked with small branches, smaller banks mm -hmm. where they were known, they got their PPP loans fast. Okay. Makes but sense. for those who really didn't have a banking relationship or right. maybe were, you know, trying to do all their banking through like Capital Just One a on a personal credit card, you know, pretending it's a, didn't, didn't work. Didn't work. And I also had people who did it all right and the SBA entered their email address wrong and they never got the paperwork right and then how do you do how do you go back well again how much time do you want to spend looking back mm -hmm. and yes. how much do you want to spend looking forward if that door is closed there's got to be another one and you might have to make some hard decisions I have a uh, interesting question to ask and it's it's uh I don't say it's personal or I don't want to say it's like judgmental but everybody's opening business, creating new business or have their old form of business. How important it is to you that you think that people should save before granted, we learned growing up, we should save, 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 um, you know, savings account, college, whatever you want to do. Um, I personally don't think businesses do a good job of saving, um, or just looking at long-term expenses, especially when it comes to like a rent or utilities, uh, so is there even like a message of for you to tell people like to incorporate this in the loans or whatever the case may be, but I see it happening every day, especially like clothing stores. Um, I don't know, small, but definitely just small business in general, I'll say, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, or people are raising money to keep things open and it's not like, you know, a startup or anything. Well, I don't say like a startup, like, you know, somebody, yeah, like a startup, it's more of people literally raising money to stay in business. Um, so for that, I look at it as just like, what's the point? Because now to me, that's like wasting time and money and resources because it's like, if you say, if I, if somebody gave me 5,000, that's a small amount or whatever like that, you know, $5,000 for rent for two months, what am I going to do on the third month? Mm -hmm. If the business was already slow. Mm -hmm. So like non-judgmental wise, is there any advice or stuff you could give to people? Like, sure. And that's not me. I just know people are getting themselves in pickles or, you know, we're excited right now. We see a lot of vacant spots or places or anything like that. Even oh, myself, man. I don't looked at five different properties. Um, <laughs> so it's just like, you know, just realistic of, are we jumping the gun or are we jumping the gun? And then we could just backtrack. Like you never know. Cause now we're getting loans and stuff like that. Like, should we just what should we do? I don't know. What should okay, people do? Well, I think we should, we should do because I represent like everybody. So I'll be speaking, but this is not for myself. I promise not this one. <laughs> I'll ask perfect. her when it's directly for myself. Perfect. That is perfect. Because we're going to be paying fine. fees if we're going to keep asking her questions. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you started with how important is it to save? And when you're starting or running a small business, budget is critical. You have to keep in mind that what you measure, you can manage. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. So one of the things that I find with my women-owned businesses is that we, first of all, we tend to want to sell what appeals to us mm. as opposed to what to, will sell to other people. So first thing is I find so many women-owned businesses are selling the wrong thing. Because or the same thing. Or the same <laughs> thing. Or, the, or, the, or the wrong thing in the same market. <laughs> mm -hmm. That you, um, and One of my favorite ones is, oh, I love to cook. I love to have people over for dinner. I'm going to open a restaurant. Okay. Uh, I used to dream about that too with mm -hmm. my girlfriend, Lisa. Oh, we'll have this lovely restaurant. But okay, what kind of food are you going to serve and to whom? Right. How are you going to get it to them? It's like, what makes you stand out that what's not already there? Well, but happening. what will people buy? Mm. Look at the restaurants that are okay right. after last year. They're the ones that went, hey, we deliver. We deliver and we'll, and we'll provide you with extra this, 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 and, oh, and then click for the tip amount. Right. Click for the tip right. amount. Oh, and, you know, oh, suggested tip, 48% mm -hmm. or whatever. Those are the restaurants that survive. So first thing you have to look at is, are you selling the right thing? And then what's your price? And you don't know your price until you know your overhead. Right. Okay. Then the other thing is you've got to pay yourself first. And Explain one of the that. things that I run into is as women, we start the business and we pay ourselves off the bottom. Mm. What's left over. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. You need to have yourself on a payroll so that you have the peace of mind to keep going. Right. So you pay yourself first mm -hmm. and along with paying yourself first, you pay your, you pay your business. Right. You create what I call a war chest okay. and you right. make sure that that war chest is full. Mm -hmm. When people come to me and they're tar talking about starting a business, the hardest thing I say is you've got to have money. Right. And, this is coming from a woman who bounced a check her first day in business. Okay. <laughs> I it's was reality, always, mm -hmm. always, always in that first business. I was always trying to get out of that hole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So generally perfect world, you save up enough money to run your business for a year. Right. If you didn't bring in a cent mm. and that includes your pay. Okay. Do most of my clients do that? No, they do not. Right. <laughs> and so you have to take a hard look at your budget. And mm -hmm. I help people with that because sometimes hearing it from somebody else doesn't That's hurt right. as much as saying it to yourself. Right. Then it's, all right, now we have the facts. Let's figure out where to go from there. And what is it about having your small business that's so important to you? Mm -hmm. Another question I ask is, if you are 12 years old and you're on your bicycle and you ride around a corner and all of a sudden there's a big steep hill, do you slam on your brakes or do you sit up and hold your arms out and go on, go down that hill with no hands? Oh, wow. If you're the girl who slams on the brakes, <laughs> you want to think twice about running your own business. Mm. It's it, there you well. have, you, you have to accept the adrenaline That's true, and you have to be able to think your best when times are worst. So that's what I've been seeing in the last year mm -hmm. is that frankly, a lot of my businesses are doing very well. And even if they didn't get the idle loan mm -hmm. or their PPP loan was only $4,000. Right. They're still doing it. Right. They're finding other ways around it because what comes to the root of it is not so much what you're selling, but that you mm -hmm. want to be a businesswoman. Right. And I do use the non-gender neutral right. term, but because Oh, you're on my show. They know I only talk about women, so. I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but women support her. We, we, okay, we, and no. well, you know, uh, 
just how help. you start out in life right. doesn't matter. But if you are presenting and being a woman, then right. it's different for you in business. Mm -hmm. And so if you love the challenge, if you love the risk, if you love to change different directions, try things, fail, uh, fail forward. Mm. I think Will Smith says that right. every time then great. Then, then business is for you. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, there are lots of other options too, like a side gig. <laughs> I wanted to add a small side note, like a little sidebar to something you said. Um, and this is my personal opinion, just the people that I deal with, definitely women. I think there's something with us that you said, it like, we got to pay ourselves first. It's like, it's, I don't want to use the word pride. It's like, I don't know. It's like, we feel like we're stealing or something like that. There's like a word there, like that, that emotion where it's just like, this is not good. But then when you think about it, well, you have to pay yourself. Like, you know, this is a job and you are performing the work. Um, so I just wanted to, to throw that out there because I've been seeing that with uh, different grants or loans and stuff like that. They're like, oh, you make sure you pay yourself first. Yes. It's been coming up a lot. I've been saying that pay yourself first. And I'm just like, that's awkward. That's weird. But then I'm just like, no, this is actually a part of the budget. Like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And if you're paying everybody else, why aren't you getting paid? Like, you know, um, and you, you, you mark that administrative costs, one side, the utilities, the other side, and I'm learning everybody. I'm learning. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Let's follow that up. What are we, what do we do as women? Most of us take care of other people. Right. Most of us at home put ourselves last. Right. And if you are in a situation where people at home are depending on you, then you can't pay yourself off the bottom of the business right. because you have people depending on you. You're going to still be struggling. <laughs> and if even, and you also have you depending mm -hmm. on you. Right. So you're right. You make, you decide the payroll. And if the business won't support the payroll, mm -hmm. change the business. That's true. <laughs> I think sometimes we're, we're not, I'm saying we, I always say we, because I don't want to target people. Right. Um, people in society are sometimes just scared to change or just do, to not go against what they already had planned. But I feel like during COVID quarantine, this would this is the best time to play or not play around, but expand your business, yeah. um, play with the business model to see what sticks and what don't stick because now everything is up for all. Every, I feel like everybody's everything back is at, a, yeah, at everything is play. up for grabs. <laughs> right. But think about it. You were, you mentioned vacancies mm -hmm. and you think, Ooh, look at that store. It's right. vacant. Okay. Hold up. Right. <laughs> What's happening to retail? Mm. What's the longer trend? Right. Really? What were we all doing when we were sitting home with not much to do? Right. Well, we were shopping. Yeah. We were all shopping. Faithfully, Amazon was upset with all of us. <laughs> oh, you were Amazon and then Target right, got Target, in on everything. it. Everybody got in it. And then, you know, you open your Instagram feed and there's like, buy this, buy that, buy the Instagram the, definitely. Buy, buy. Oh my gosh. They definitely switched over to yeah. the shopper the friendly user method and yeah. everybody was like my, oh my page God. is not even a business page swipe, for <laughs> swipe up right. order now and you know then three days later you've got 15 boxes right. on your front porch how did that happen okay but we how much are we going to leave that behind to mm. go to a store gotcha. okay well, you might have to go to a store if you sit and realize that there's nothing in your closet that will go around your waist right. anymore. And you got to find out what <laughs> will quarantine go 15 been hitting That's for right. real. <laughs> uh, but other than that, you know, is this really the time to open mm -hmm. a retail location where you can only sell to the people who can get to your store? Right. Or are you going to open up on the Shopify network where you can reach the world? The wor exactly. So these are the kind of things to think about because, you know, you can imagine the store and you've got your mannequins right. and you're there behind the counter right. and makeup's just right. And <laughs> pe well, how many people are going to come into that store a day? Right. And how many boxes can you, you pack push out, in right, a day? Right. And that's the supply and demand is going to be off, off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, if, and demand has switched. Right. Something very important happened before COVID hit, you know, mm -hmm. economy's going great. Everybody's feeling pretty good. You know, we, you know, we can pick fights on Twitter, but <laughs> otherwise life is good. <laughs> we were buying things that helped us to feel successful. Mm -hmm. 
kind of show off a little. You know, we all were. A right. little bit this, that. Just so. COVID hit, and people started buying things that made them feel safe. Right. So uh, one of my friends was selling um, tractors okay. imported from China, you know, for people to use on their four-acre homes, wow. right? That, that was okay. <laughs> COVID hit, and the same person is now selling single cylinder diesel engines that you know you can pretty much get started and power your house okay. when you know Mobile. it all goes down the drain, wow. which we're all worrying about. <laughs> so, you know, that's the idea of selling the right thing. Nobody's buying a luxury lawn tractor right now, right? But are we buying things still that make us feel safe? I mean, is there any one of us who doesn't have a closet full of paper towels? That's true. <laughs> Piled up under the bed. I wish I could have gotten into the paper towel stock business or something like that, making my own paper towels the way that it's needed. Paper towels, toilet paper, and disinfectant. There yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thing. And now here's another cool thing about a hand sanitizer mm -hmm. that I found out is that the... Oh, goodness. DEA, somebody who controls the distilleries okay. around, said to the distilleries, hey, we need hand sanitizer. Wow. So there's a little distillery up in Gloucester that's selling its own private label hand sanitizer. Just directly for that. Yeah, market. and I've got I've got their one liter, one liter spray bottle. I mean, I hand sanitize everybody comes in. <laughs> Everything. But. I, you know, how, what a great way because nobody was coming into the distillery for Insane. fancy tastings. Right. Hand sanitizer. Oh, they yeah. Knew where it was. So that's going back to, you know, what do we, as women, what do we do right. in order to be successful in business? First thing, you've got to sell the right thing. You've got to sell Second the right thing, thing you you've got to measure and you've got to budget. Okay. The other thing that we tend to do as women is fake it. <laughs> um, you have in your hand mm -hmm. all the all the knowledge of the entire world in your iPhone. Mm. So as women, when we're in business, we need to keep reading, learning, expanding. If you're not sure about how to do a budget, you know, Alexa, how do I do my business budget? Up my um my laptop, and you can look at my history. I've been looking at images of just budgets, different how people like line item their budgets and stuff like that, like right. different phrases and topics. Look, it's all on Google. Yeah, <laughs> and there Google. are YouTube videos. Right, not saying everything's great, but just a layout. Like yeah. it's just a layout. But, um, yeah, it's just you can look at layouts for. Right. Your, but let's say you have no idea how to make a budget. Right, YouTube. Right, just like that. YouTube. Figure out. But now we need. can pay our attorney <laughs> consultation fees, y'all. Nope, we got to bring the business in. We got to really in. So right. we keep the business. We well, don't want to give it to, to the me, internet. No, so let me I'll talk, talk a little bit about how I help. Okay. Okay. Say you come to me and say, you know, I want to start a business um, grooming giraffes. Mm -hmm. All right. Why not? This came to my head. <laughs> I was like, I would not be surprised if somebody said that because I'm over here like, wow, that's, I didn't even think about that as a there job. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, I that's, wanna... like, that's probably a thing. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say, well, how did you come up with that? Have you thought about what clients, well, you know, Franklin Park, just right. maybe they've got a new baby giraffe mm -hmm. or, you know, I saw this, whatever. So now you've got, now you've got your business. Okay. Next, you know, you know, identify your customers. That's all the homework that you have to do. Then when I get together with you, we talk about what kind of an entity are you going to have? You said that you were looking to get your business certificate uh, a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So when you get just a business certificate, that usually means you're what's called a sole proprietor. Right. And right. look at, I learned that. I was like, <laughs> you're a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. uh, the tricky thing about being a sole proprietor is it's great if it's a side gig, mm -hmm. not so much if it's your only job okay. because you pay social security tax on every cent of profit. Ah, I'm just so, going to be quiet. I'm going to listen to you right now. <laughs> okay. So there's a big old hole in your budget there called mm, extra social security tax. So meanwhile, if you've got a good job, 
and maybe you need some extra deductions. Sole proprietorship is the way to go. Okay. Everybody talks about an LLC, right? right? Oh, I got to start an LLC. I see so many people get them. Just like, what oh, is really what is it? Right. What is it? It's a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. What it means is the members of the company are not liable for the company's debts. Okay. Honestly, this will be my first time getting the definition of a LLC, even though I could have looked it up, I just realized I never knew what that meant. It's I funny. just knew is everybody needed it or wanted it for their bit. That is <laughs> now, but wait, wow. there's more. There. Okay. Okay. The IRS does not believe in LLCs. All of the IRS cares about is Do hear this? Okay. Yeah, they <laughs> don't believe in LLCs. So you go and you pay the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Five hundred dollars. Mm. That's just one. That's not even a right. For your to form your LLC, mm. and then you're going to pay that. It's actually five hundred twenty if you do it online. I do it all day. <laughs> Next year you're going to pay five hundred twenty dollars again. But like I said, the IRS and the Department of Revenue they don't believe in limited liability companies. So as far as they're concerned, you're either a sole proprietorship, mm -hmm. a partnership or a corporation. Right. Okay. So if you are an LLC and you decide that you're actually a corporation for tax purposes, not only do you get to pay that whopping $520 every year, you get to pay the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Revenue another $456 for your corporate extra. tax. Yes. I was waiting for you to hit them fees. I'm like, I, people be like, yeah, I'm going to get my LLC. I'm like, you sure that's the route you want to go? Because <laughs> if, you, if you become a corporation. Right. Then that's it. You're right. Okay. You're People are shocked you're, I'm not an LLC. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't Your time. annual <laughs> filing fee is 110, I think, right. or 120. And you still have the 456. And that's not included the taxes though, right? Like that you have to pay for, I don't know. I thought there was like extra fees just to keep it running. That's the $520. That's that, that, yeah. that corporate tax. And okay, okay. yeah. And then the corporate tax. But if you incorporate, your annual fee is lower okay. by $380 okay. at least. So why have an LLC? Right. You could have an LLC mm -hmm. if, again, it's your side gig right. and you want to run it as a sole proprietorship right. or you have partners. Say you want to true, say yeah. you want to buy, um, say, uh, you know, your grandmother passes away and she has a two family mm -hmm. and you and your cousin want to run it as a rental property. Mm -hmm. Okay, you could be That's an right. LLC. Okay, that way, remember, parties. limited liability company. All right. So you, the members, would be protected from the liability of the company and you would be taxed as a partnership. Okay. So that would work. So this is what I do. I help you figure it out. And I'm not, you know, drive you crazy no, here. No. But I'm loving this that I'm just like, I don't want to ask you more because I feel like I'm just getting free knowledge, even though we can, you know, certain stuff, but it, it's, it's, it's better when somebody definitely is talking it out with you. And I'm sure the people who's watching, is going to watch it later. There's so many friends and artists and people of mine who have these questions, just even the basics LLC or, uh, uh the business certificate. Um, so this will go a long way. So oh, I, good. trust me, no, good. it's all great. But this, this is what we do. We get you set up. Right. And then the other thing, people go and they file these LLCs themselves because they read, oh, all you have to do is file one paper. Well, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, remember I told you the IRS doesn't believe in LLCs? Mm -hmm. Well, when the IRS comes knocking to audit you because the IRS oh. likes to pick on the little guy, forgive me, I have clients who are IRS, they work for the IRS, I love them all. But <laughs> the IRS like a... <laughs> does audit small right. businesses more than big businesses. Oh, trust. I sure got audited this year. Um, oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can, I, I, I prove it. Yeah. I, good. I, <laughs> I work with someone who does a great job handling IRS audits. Yeah. The thing is that why, right away they want to see your corporate book the, and you say, well, what's that? Right. And they're like, mm -hmm. automatically now their little antenna up some more. So we set you up with all that paper mm -hmm. or those electrons right. that you have to have. And when we, you know, when we give you the corporate book, mm -hmm. 
it has an explanation of each document in American. Ooh. So now you know what what the-, what the rules of the game for your business are. And we are available to our clients for anything. You know, just um, I one of my clients is oh she's brilliant in business, and I just love it when she comes in. She's so elegant. She's so oh fabulous at what she does. She managed her loans flawlessly. I mean, she's just one of those women. And she saw this as an opportunity to help her, the employees she had who were not um, perhaps working at their best, help them to move on to other opportunities. Wow, okay. So All I right. worked with her on how to do that. Mm-hmm. What, what does, you know, what's the separation interview like? Right. What do you say? What documents do you give? How much money do you have to exchange? You're like the A and R of small businesses. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know, along those same lines, we do. Mm-hmm. We have clients who are musicians, right. photographers, because that's business too. Okay. And everybody else, doctors. Okay, like, you're gonna have anybody. a DJ. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm call you next week. I got you. You got a DJ now on deck. Um, oh, right. <laughs> Oh, okay. I do love it. Let's see. And that's the other thing is that uh, there are just two of us attorneys, mm-hmm. you know, me, Freya, and then Amanda. Mm-hmm. And Amanda was one of my students when right. I was teaching at Suffolk University Law School. Wow. I went to Suffolk briefly. We'll talk about that off air. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably know my professors. Oh, <laughs> I, I probably do. But um, anyway, so Amanda just passed the bar. She's in the 95th percentile wow congratulations amanda smart girl wow and she you know she's been with me for three years already so she's there i'm there we have our stano paralegals everybody else all of us just we're all about small business because i'll tell you something else the great recession Mm -hmm. oh everybody was getting their corporate you know bailouts on and on and on my clients my clients had to put food on the table. Wow, we yeah. couldn't be keening and wailing and say great recession because we weren't going to get any corporate bailout. You had to just get up in the morning and find a way to put food on the table. And it, I, I saw it in so many ways mm-hmm. what kept our nation going enough mm-hmm. so that when things got better, they really got better. Who's the small businesses? Yep, just because like that. you know your dry cleaner does not care what is happening uh- in Washington. At all. No. Nope. You know, <laughs> now they got the E, you know, they have the DEP and the EPA and right. all of that they have to worry about and right. regulations spotting up like crazy. Again, call me. But fact is, they got to bring those clothes in the door and send them out clean. And do it right. right. And, you know, and what else can we do? We're a dry cleaner. What else can we help to bring in business? All of that had to keep going. I want to say um, definitely shout out. Well, I'm going to do two shout outs real quick. One is to uh, an article came out in the eatery, uh, Shevu Roller Skating Rink. They were actually really, really big at changing their model because the skating rinks couldn't be open. Right. So they started serving food out their kitchen. There and you they go. Was already, you know, they already had food there, but now they're on Grubhub. They're on Uber Eats there. They got slushies. They have all this stuff, um, Southern food um, and Caribbean food that catered to the community where mm-hmm. it's now like, okay, well, we can't get our skate on, but we can get some food. And that's not something, you know, usual or normal that would have been happening prior uh, to COVID. Um, then here we are lovely at Spark FM. Uh, this was already in the works. So shout out to Hot Sauce and Danielle, uh, first female black owned radio station that we're in right now, uh, literally was on Kickstarter and the community pitched in, yeah. everybody pitched in. And then now it's just like a, a space for us community folks to come in and share their stories. Um, and this has been like two uh, successful small businesses yes. that I have seen personally during COVID-19. So, yes. But, Great examples. Yeah. Great examples. Um, that was that. Uh, I have some, let's see, some questions that they told me I can ask a little bit. Um, just in case, because I know we covered a lot, but let's see, where do I want to take mm. this? It's like, in what situations would an attorney be needed? And we covered some of that, but there is something with licensing that people do not know of. I only know about licensing through music and distribution. That's how I was like to speak a little bit about distribution. Um, I have a couple of videos that's licensed right now that like, if you know, get 
couple streams, whatever, I get a dollar. <laughs> right, um, right. But when it comes to small business, what does that mean? Is that like a store getting my music and paying me for it or the opposite? Or we talk about a whole different licensing of just like paperwork and your name needs to be on a lease or something like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know I've been asking okay. five different questions, but I know you're a beautiful lawyer because you answer everything. And I'm like, I don't know how she keep up because I be forgetting what I asked. But <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay. You say licensing mm -hmm. and well, that's about as narrow as business. Right. So when you go to start a business, mm -hmm. you do have to look at what licenses do you need? Let me give you an example of one that tripped up a lot of women. You need a license to do hair braiding. You need a license to do eyebrow threading. Yeah. You need a license to do eyelash extensions. I thought you did. Yeah, you do. Oh, I was like, okay, okay. Yeah, I was like, wait, I you thought do. you did. Oh, so. No, you need a license oh, for need... all those gotcha. things. Okay. Hey, seriously? And everybody's like, really? Like, yeah. You know, the food one always catches catch and, me off guard. Everybody thinks that they could just, you know, sell no, food and then, right now. okay, <laughs> now let's move on to the restaurants. <laughs> Okay, you've got the Board of Health, you know, your local Board of Health, you've got your state board. So there are all those licenses. Mm -hmm. And I spend, unfortunately, quite a bit of time helping people when their licenses lapse, they forget, oh, wow, yeah. or they don't have their licenses visible. Mm. That's another one you get tripped up or they, you know, it's lapsed and it's not visible. Right. So we do a lot of work with that. Okay. There are those licenses. Then you brought up another, other really good one. Mm -hmm. If you are running a restaurant mm -hmm. and you have music coming in, mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit careful about how you have that music coming in because if you are profiting from the music you have to share that with sure? the people who made nope. the music and the Do. people who produced the music right and that was the first kind of licensing that you were talking about right. is the right to use your stuff mm -hmm. and again I, we have all kinds of artists who create all kinds of beautiful things nice. be they auditory or visual and you want to get it out in the community but then it gets stolen. Right. One of my clients, um, did gorgeous silk screens mm -hmm. and wanted to sell them. So my client went and met with a potential vendor, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, we're going to have you in our store. I just need to show some of these <laughs> to the manager. The oldest trick in the book. Yep. And guess what? One week later, all those shirts were in all those stores and my client had absolutely no, control. no nothing. And it was like, Oh my gosh, you gave, you just gave it away. You gave yeah. it away. And they're making hundreds of thousand dollars right. off of your art. Yep. And what are you going to do next time? Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing. Well, can I sue them? I was like, no, you now gave them. Right. So helping people protect mm -hmm. what we call intellectual property is also a big part of what we do. Okay. So, because I, we don't just do business in our own neighborhood anymore. We do business actually with the entire universe. Oh. You know, once this goes out, right. once you do a, a Zoominar or a video or a YouTube, it's out Everything. there into infinity. I don't know if Martians are watching <laughs> it or whatever. <laughs> with but, their popcorn. <laughs> but exact, yes, with their popcorn. I can see it. But how do we protect it? and make sure that the credit stays with the person who owns it. Mm. So again, with our little businesses, you right. know, you have a slogan, you have a logo. We probably ought to trademark that. Right. It's only $50 FY. Well, you know, the price. I was like, it's $50 when I looked online, the website, the Massachusetts. To I, trademark in Massachusetts. I was like, looking, like, am, 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 am I telling stories? No, on right. that? no. <laughs> but I the, the paperwork that said it's $50. So I have three of them because I'm on a trademark, three different things. Right. But, and you get to put the TM. Now, what right. does the trademark get you? Uh -huh. See, now I have a trick question. I just know that nobody can't use it. Oh, well, actually, uh -huh. all it gets you is the right to sue them if they use it. Oh, that's even better for me. I in, love it. In state court again. Oh, oh dang, not state court. I mean, I need, I need global. So how can uh, I make this bigger? Okay. We, okay. There, <laughs> there we go. That's so you have a state court trademark that lets you use the little TM. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want that circle R, right, that's federal. 
that's federal and that's trickier. That's like probably some some thousands more. It's it's more. It's affordable. And again, we're very aware of, of, you know, we know we're not working with Google. Mm -hmm. And we know it's very important to me that for my clients, that line item on the budget, Mm -hmm. legal, it's important to me that that contributes to black ink on your bottom line Mm. and that it's not just a big hole in your budget again. So we set up a budget. You want to trademark certain things. You want federal trademark or copyright. Mm -hmm. This is what the government charges for their fees. This is what we charge for the work. Now, how does that fit into your budget? And you can decide, work it out. So maybe you have a design you know, you might have your own um, Logan, your slogans all go with your work as a DJ that you want to protect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what you might do is keep those quiet for a while. Okay. Then you get your protection in place. Mm-hmm. And then you launch. And that way you've, you've protected what you have. Um, you know, other stuff you might put out there and say, yeah, it's okay. They can have it. Right. But- Oh, no, nobody's going to have nothing of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it, this is part of what we do mm-hmm. is we'll make sure that you have you know, you, the protection that you need. What is a trade secret? What is it that you're not going to tell anybody? Mm. Um, for example, Coca-Cola, the recipe is not patented. You know why? It's because you got to make your stuff in a patent public. Mm-hmm. So- the recipe for Coca-Cola is a secret right. <laughs> and it has to be. Right. So you have your trade secret. That's why people always say they put something in it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that was from back. They day. put delicious in it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> delicious. Anyway, <laughs> this is the same, same thing for you. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, you have your shows that you do. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you do DJ work, right. um, you put everything together really into a package, right. then if that's, if you're going to have somebody play that, you want to make sure that you've got all your protection in place and then you license, you let them use it for a fee. And that's okay. another kind of license is right. I'll let you use my stuff for, the for a fee. All right. So that y'all can use anything y'all want from my, for a fee. Okay. I'll send you the price. Just let me know. Thank right. Yeah. For a fee. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's, you too. If y'all need a, you know, music in the, the office, let me know. <laughs> right. Right. But well, it's um one of my one of my clients just started up a YouTube channel. Nice. Right? And it's subscription only. Look good. That's- now it was interesting because my client was really excited and was like, look at my YouTube, look at my YouTube. And I said, So uh how do you get that? <laughs> Well, you go to YouTube and you put this in and it mm-hmm. comes up. I said, mm-hmm. Like, how do you monetize? Uh, now, yeah. now, how do you get paid right. for that? So what you put up on YouTube, that's your free sample. Look and good. then now you do your subscriptions. Right. So uh, you, that's, that's all part of it. How do you, how do you make money mm-hmm. selling things that people want to buy? Right. Absolutely. Monetize everything, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's how you keep score. Right. No, seriously. Money's just how you keep score. Right. I'm, I'm just learning every day. I'm just here taking it all in. That's all. Um, <laughs> but if there, let me see. I'm going to ask one last question because it's my favorite question. Oh, good. What's the best advice you've been given? Or is there anybody who has inspired you in your journey as a lawyer doing this work? Um, and then we're going to wrap it up after that. I know that was like two different ways. I'm always like the double question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, if I were doing a deposition, I would say a uh, motion to strike. There were two questions. Right there. <laughs> okay. Unresponsive. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you wanted to know, have I been particularly inspired by someone in my journey as a lawyer? Yes. Okay. And I got to say, the person who has inspired me most, human, has inspired me most throughout my life, was my mother. 
she was she was not a lawyer, uh, but she was amazing at handling adversity mm -hmm. with grace and courage and turning it into an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And she did that in so many ways throughout her life that I said, okay, that's how you do it. Right. I can, I can do that. I can, she's teaching me these things. Yeah. I can do that too. So, and if you look at my website, mm -hmm. the illustrations on my website were all done by my mother. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. I'm a little, look at they, I didn't know who did them. I'm just, I'd just be creeping on uh, the background. Oh, it's not printed out. I had like the page printed out of your um, been Creeping website. on my background? Yeah, because <laughs> if I was on StreamYard, I can, uh, I, well, we are on StreamYard. I was going to upload it at the same time, the website, so you can see it. But I can do it later. I'll oh, all later. right. I'll Great. Later. I so love it. see it at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then, I already asked that. What's the best, what's the best advice you've been given? The best advice that I've been given as far as being in business, because remember, I'm a small business woman too. Right. I already said it. If you measure it, mm -hmm. you can manage it. If you measure it, you can manage it. And that, that has been the best advice. Because whenever I find that there's something that I just, it's just getting after me, I realize, well, wait a minute. It's all kind of vague. So... Let me pull the data in. Mm -hmm. Let me measure. Let me find out exactly what this is. Exactly what is it? All right. Now I can manage that. And, you know, it might be, um, there have been things that I've had to change in the way I do business over the years. Mm -hmm. There have been certain legal services that have my client, clients don't need them. I love it. Love doing it. Clients don't need it. I let it go. Because okay. measure it. Sure. You measure it, you can manage it. Well, I definitely want to thank you for joining us at Spark FM on Lunch Is Over. We are live Tuesdays. My mouth will just be touching this mic. That's I'm, I'm about to bleach my mouth when I... <laughs> <laughs> um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, definitely, again, big, big thank you. If you want to, do not do not email her any questions. Pay the consultation <laughs> fee. That's me. That's me giving my <laughs> own free <laughs> talking. Uh, we going to pay to get some advice. You're going to pay um, to have her on deck when we go into these meetings with these small business lawyers. I'm looking here like the camera's not there. Like, I'm, <laughs> I want to see you like a serious look. Like, we're going to pay. <laughs> um, but no, thank you for joining oh, us today. Thank you. This has just you been so back. much fun. I would love to. Um, this has been so much fun. We'll have some stuff during the summer, so definitely feel free to come back. Love we want to love you and enjoy. Um, and we're going to check in about how some of these small businesses are doing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and then, uh, oh, oh, I, I want my goodie bag. Some, oh, right. Look at, I want everybody to definitely, I'm going to spell it out because I talk fast. Make sure I say it right. Schofner. 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 Associates.com. Uh, we got this lovely, we're going to put it in the screen. Lovely hand sanitizer. See, that's what you call branding and marketing, everybody. <laughs> but and, it's, oh, and we've, I think we've got our, our model here coming oh, up. Snap. S H O F F N E R associates.com. Again, that is S H O F F N E R associates.com. I would have spelled everything up, but y'all couldn't spell associates. And there's your official Schaffner Associates mask. Look, I'm going to wash. I'm just going to put it right on because I would trust y'all. Yep, there we go. Then I'm going to put it in the screen. Oh, I love it. The logo. Yep. And, and you can call us. Our number is 617-369-0111. And we answer the phone 24-7. Again, 617-369-0111. Please don't be afraid to call. Really, <laughs> it's, it just don't. I, I know, lawyer, Boston, uh, just, <laughs> just, just call. And if, if we can help, we will. And if I can't help, I probably know someone who can. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. See, I love that, that saying. Um, No, again, thank you all. And I'm going to keep that as a commercial, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to cut that and add that into my sets for the rest of that's okay with you all. (laughs) All right. Um, The phone number two and everything. So it's going to be a commercial on my show. (laughs) Wonderful. Thank you so much because this is so much fun. And I be so happy to come back and answer questions that people have because this is my thing. Small businesses, particularly women-owned small businesses, it's my thing. Thank you. Well, we'll catch y'all on Thursday. Um, DJ Y Sham Music Mix. You'll catch this episode live right now up on Spark FM's Facebook. You'll catch it on YouTube. Um, and we'll have it added to Spotify, anchor.com, and a bunch of other places you can tune into. But make sure you just go to Boston Guy Next backslash lunch is over, and you will find the episode there too as well. But have a great day, everybody. <laughs>